getting pretty close to revealing this one, right? Um, I did try to convince him to just lift the cover, start the engine up, and let you guys take it for a ride. That was not an option either. So if I can get a couple of folks from the team, um, I'm going to get out of the way. Because this is really the reason why we came, right? So in about three, two, one, let's take a look at it. Now, what you guys are looking at here, obviously, you all know it's a ZR1, right? Uh, Corvette's been making Corvette, Corvette, <laughs> Chevrolet's been making Corvette since uh, 1953. As you all know, it's one of the longest running nameplates in the history of automobile. Um, and it's a true, uh, true American icon. Um, it's been around for seven generations. And um, every so often, they do bless us with the ZR1. Uh, the first ZR1 was what? Does anybody know? We're going to do a little quiz. What generation? C4. Right? And then a C4. And then it skipped the generation. There was a C6, and you guys were here for that, and so was Linda. Um, and now C7. Um, this is truly the last samurai, right? The end of an era. Um, because we strongly believe that the next time you may see a ZR1, it may be in a little bit of a different configuration, right? Because um, they keep talking about that mid-engine. And um, this car really, really shows what you can do with the front engine where it will drive. Now, what we all know, it's very heavily based on a Z06, some of which you guys drive. Um, it is very different in it. Z06 being a supercar in its own, this car beats it in every single category. Um, and they've done that multiple different ways, and we're better to start than the front of the car, right? Um, kind of see that that's a little, little raised over there. It's, it's a supercharger. You've seen one on the Z06. This one is a little bit bigger. Um, it is 52% larger than the one you see on the Z06. Um, it is a 2.6 liter Eaton four lobe supercharger that um, hands the muscle to this car. Um, you might have seen that YouTube video that says Chevy trucks are made out of uh, what? 
tornadoes and Bruce Lee movies, right? Um, this engine, <laughs> this engine creates a, a hurricane inside. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the engineers said that this engine broke a bunch of the dynam dynamometers. English is a second language. Well, they were testing it, right? So, 755 horsepower, 700 pound-feet of torque, 1.2 Gs with the available ZTK package, which this car has, and I'll tell you about it, and it's 212 miles per hour. <laughs> Horrible, isn't it? I mean, what are you gonna do with it? How did they do that, right? They took a Z06, and as you can see, this front end is a little bit wider. It's got a little bit more air to breathe over here, right? So they added a few things. Um, any Z06 owners? Taking it to the track. I know there was a couple issues here and there, maybe with some heating. Um, they've addressed that. Um, they added four new heat exchangers, and if you read that Road and Track magazine uh, recently, it is an amazing article. It's well written, but the number was off. He said five. It's actually four, um, bringing the total to 13. It's got plenty of air coming through the front to cool that engine. They actually tested it in the temperatures uh, up to about 100 Fahrenheit, so it can handle the heat. Um, interestingly enough, also, when you look at the front, you'll notice that the um, you have this beautiful carbon fiber splitter, but what you don't see here is an underwing that goes under the car and actually acts as a counterbalance to this thing right here. What do you think? Yeah. Am I allowed to touch it? <laughs> um, because of this wing that's uh, sitting here in the back, it's also in carbon fiber, um, car produces 950 pound of downforce, um, and it needed a little bit of help from the front. Um, doing doing that as well, they they've added some more air because these super super engines and super cars need a little bit more uh, air and fuel to breathe. They've also added uh, dual injection. Right, you have your standard direct injection, and you have under heavy loads the port injection kicks in. Um, 90 millimeter bore up front too, to, to get some of that air, right? And then, uh, so we got, uh, we got that air coming in, air coming over, air coming under, that big wing up front, uh, points most of the air over the car. Some of it comes out through that big, big hood, uh, goes over the car and makes it sticks, right? One car, one thing that this car may be missing, or we thought it was missing, right? Because it does have the ZTK package, and for those of you that don't speak for that, that's the track package that's gonna give you that big wing on the end, and it's also gonna give you the winglets on the front. And they're missing, does anybody know why? It is a convertible, who said that? Oh, Scott, that wasn't for you. <laughs> you just ruined it, Scott, but it's okay. <laughs> also, when they, were, when they were testing this car, and they put this big wing on it, it broke a lot of things, because of so much downforce, so the mounts actually stab right through here and mount to the frame. For the folks that don't necessarily need the track package and don't want this beautiful big wing, and I don't know why it wouldn't, uh, or for the folks that just want the top speed of 212, GM does build this car with a lower wing. And that's really um, how you achieve the top speed. I actually heard somebody say earlier they would give you an option of not getting a wing at all. That is not correct. It would not be safe to drive this car without a wing. Right. As far as the interior of the car goes, in general, you can get two trim levels. They got rid of one because you don't really need it. You have a 1ZR, which is base for the track junkies, right? And then you get a 3ZR with Napa leather and all the bells and whistles. 1ZR um, comes only in black. 3ZR gives you all the, all the other options. Um, you can also get the Sebring Orange Design Package, which is what's on this car. Um, as you can see, it is the orange paint, the orange calipers. By the way, does somebody know what the difference is between the calipers and the brakes on this car and the Z06? I'm sorry? They're both carbon ceramic. They're both the same size, six piston front, four piston rear. It's just the coating that's different. So they did borrow a few things from the Z06 that worked, that worked really well. So with that said, uh, back to the Sebring package. You have the bronze highlights inside. You have the carbon fiber steering wheel with Alcantara. Orange seat belts. 
and I think I said orange calipers, right? As well as the Carmel Flash wheels. Um, with that said, I could probably go on and on about this car, ZR1 in general. All right, how about the, uh, did you go over to zero to 60 time yet? Oh, you are? After you start it? How about zero to 100? Do we know what that is? Huh? That's pretty quick, right? Six eight, six seconds. Huh? Six one. Six one. You know, it's a mystery all over the internet what they publish on this car. I think they, they accidentally broke the record at VIR when they were testing the car, right? And it was just an engineer driving. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, non, a non-professional driver. So, zero to sixty time. Who knows what zero to sixty is on this car? No. Huh? It's not two eight five. Two eight. Two eight. Well, Milo says it's 285, but I will tell you, I just went to Las Vegas on the track and the guys were telling me it was 265. Woo! So I don't know. Maybe one was a manual, one was an automatic. Uh, but I do know this for a fact the 0 to 100 miles an hour is six seconds flat. Right? They drove me around in the car with a professional driver. All right, it felt good. Hi, I'm Allie from Exhaust Sports Auto. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to see more stylish whips, hot rods, and baller mobiles in every video.